The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. I'm so thankful for the light that is with us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come and shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. We have some um, announcements to share with you today. The insert in your bulletin actually was printed. Um, there's duplicate. Um, everything you need is on one side of that page. And when you turn it, um, just have a little look at that. See what's going on so you won't be surprised when it comes. It's a little difficult to uh, describe from up here. But you can look at one half of the page front and rear. Prayer cards are here for you to use, and we ask that you leave them outside of the basket so that pastor can see if someone has shared a prayer request this morning that we need to remember during our prayer time. Nominating committee meets today after worship, and the church office is going to be closed uh, the 17th through the 26th as Denise is on vacation. Street fair starts this week. Are there any special announcements that we need to make concerning that? We need pop, and that is um, brand name, Coke, Coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, regular or diet? Regular and diet. So you can bring those in. Was, was there anything else? Uh, just thank you, everybody who has signed up to work the booth. I have no holes, so I appreciate that. So that is taken care of. Um, as in, uh, we have ice coming in. Oh, we always take eyes. And but our pop situation is dire. We need those brand name soft drinks. Uh, the pastor will be taking some time off this week. She will be out of town. So if you have pastoral care that needs, uh, you can, there's a phone number there uh, for the pastor driver, uh, the pastor of Jersey Presbyterian Church, and you can call. Are there any other announcements to be made this morning? All right. Then we will listen to our prelude and let our worship begin. Lord's Day, all. Oh, it's so good to be with you in the sanctuary and those who are online. Welcome back to some of you who have been traveling. It's good to have you with us today. We are all here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we're called to worship now as we stand and have our responsive reading from Psalm 111, verse 1. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. We open in our hymns of faith with number 36. I know this is a favorite of a particular person. 
for the beauty of the earth. Let us sing together. Having lifted a hymn of grateful praise, let us not stop praising the Lord Jesus, the one who came to die for us and save us from our sins, so that we can come before him and confess our sins with honesty and with sincere hearts. He hears our prayers and answers them. In unison, let us pray. Holy and merciful God, in your presence, we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and worry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us be assured of forgiveness responsively. Hear the good news. Who is in the position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. 
The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts that we might call out and receive God's word. Together we call, Scripture cannot be set aside. What does Scripture say? We ask, O Lord, what does Scripture say? For we unto ourselves cannot know what it is that you have to say to us and what you mean. Only your spirit can hear you rightly, and through your spirit that lives within us can light be shed on the word that you have for us today. We open our hearts, our minds, our ears, our lives to hear and to heed, and to walk in the way of your light. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So we've been walking through the book of Acts, the second book written by Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And at the beginning of the book, we have heard how the Holy Spirit has been poured out on the church, which originally was comprised of the Jewish believers, the followers of Jesus Christ who were Jewish. And the Spirit was poured out on power so that those who were believers in Christ, the Jewish believers, could take the faith, the bear witness, starting in Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we've been watching how the faith begins to be spread. The Spirit was poured out in Jerusalem, but then in time, the church, having received the clothing and the power of the Holy Spirit, has started taking the word out. And it's gone out just like Jesus has said. The next stop was Samaria. Remember Philip? He's not even an apostle. He's a deacon. He's an evangelist. And he went to Samaria to minister to the Jewish people who were Samarans, the ones who didn't go back into the temple to worship. They worshiped right on the mountain in Samaria. So Philip ministered to them, as did Peter and as did John. Philip also had an occasion to minister to the ends of the earth by meeting a Jewish man who was a convert but lived elsewhere, who lived in Ethiopia. There were many people who were Jewish converts that came for Pentecost, but the Ethiopians weren't there. So Philip ministered to him. Then in time, even the apostles began to leave Jerusalem and to spread the faith. Last week, we heard of how Peter had left Jerusalem and who went along the Mediterranean Sea. And there he went to Lydda, and then he went to Joppa. Today he'll be moving down the coast even further to a place called Caesarea. And so he begins to witness just as had been started by the Holy Spirit, but something brand new and very special happens today. And it's the reason why we are here as a people. Had this event not happened, it's what set us off to be the church. So I'm going to actually start reading from Acts 10. That's our main passage today. It's the entire chapter, but I'm going to read segments from it. Beginning at verse 1, we're on page 1565. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Stop there for a second. 
So Cornelius wasn't Jewish. He was Roman. He was specifically Italian. But he still feared God and prayed. He hadn't converted to Judaism. So for Gentiles, for pagans who had not converted, but who knew of the God of the Bible, they had a special word for them. They called him, them God-fearers. Cornelius was a Gentile god Fear. And he even showed it through his prayer and his generosity of giving. Moving on to verse 3. One day, at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinct, distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. So take a break there and let's take stock of this. This is truly incredible. Here is a man who is a Gentile, who is not Jewish, who is not a believer, and an angel of the Lord, God of the Bible, has sent an angel to him. Now angels barely went to anybody. In the Old Testament, they maybe went to special people like prophets or priests or kings. In the New Testament, we have heard of an angel going to Mary and to Joseph to talk about the birth of Jesus and to their cousin, Zachariah, who's a priest. Angels did appear, but only to the special people. And an angel appeared to a Gentile. And even more than that, to a centurion, ones who were part of the Roman role and subjecting the Jewish people to the Roman role and who were present at the death of Jesus Christ. Is this amazing, all of you? It should. It surely amazed Cornelius. But he believed into it. And he sent for those to go to Peter. Now, in the meantime, turn the page, 1566. I'm not going to read this portion. In the meantime, what's going on with Peter? Peter is a believer. He's an apostle. And he gets a simultaneous vision. Just as Cornelius got a vision from an angel, Peter gets a vision from the Holy Spirit. A vision that confronts him about the Jewish law. The Jewish law that says, only eat kosher, don't eat those unclean animals and do not even socialize with those unclean people that is the pagan Gentiles. For years he has practiced this. He has stayed separate and all of a sudden he gets this vision that God gives him that speaks to him and says, do not call unclean what I have made clean. Verse 17, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, was, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius, the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guest. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. 
As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him, made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. This is extraordinary. This should remind us a lot of the passage about the Ethiopian and Philip, who both received instructions from God, but this is even more direct. Cornelius receives instructions, and he believes that Simon will come. Simon receives instructions, and against what is the Jewish law, he comes. He believes what the Lord is saying to him. So he goes and he meets Cornelius, and they're swapping and sharing stories at this point. Verse 28. So this is what Peter says to Cornelius. He says to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate or visit a Gentile, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? And the next thing that happens is Cornelius explains all that happened to him. So do you see how the Holy Spirit works? The Holy Spirit gets Peter ready to go. And simultaneously, the Holy Spirit gets Cornelius ready to receive and to ask for Peter to come. This is a way of evangelism. That's an important thing to take note of. So then... After Cornelius tells him what's happened, we pick up at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the providence, province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. So stop there for a minute. Can you hear him? He's telling Cornelius, you know all this. You have witnessed it. You know of Jesus. You knew what he did. And then he speaks of the believers of Christ. Verse 39, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us, to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as a judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. There's an invitation. You did not get to see him alive and resurrected. We did. And we have been told that we are to share this good news with you. That if you believe in him, your sins too, through his name, will be forgiven. Did you hear the invitation? An invitation for Cornelius to receive the faith of Jesus Christ. And what happens next? Get ready. It's amazing. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. All who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Excuse me? Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God because this is for us. We're the Gentiles. 
We follow after Cornelius. We have received the word and we believe into Jesus Christ. Cornelius was the first one. There was the Pentecost, which is the birth of the church, but that was the Jewish church. This is the birth of the Gentile church. This is the second Pentecost, the Pentecost for us. And we who have believed can be baptized into the family of faith. Today we have the baptismal font out. It's sitting there because we are believers and we come into the faith showing, bearing witness to each other when we are baptized or when we reaffirm our faith, such as one person will be doing today or professing our faith. Now, this news of the Gentile. Now, Jesus, when he came to minister, he often said to people, I'm here to minister to the lost sheep of Israel, to the Jewish people. We were just talking about this in Sunday school. But did he just go to the Jewish people? There were times he ministered to Gentiles. He ministered to the Canaanite woman, the Seraphonician woman. He went to the Decapolis across the Jordan River, and he ministered to a crazy man, a Gerasene. He ministered to those who were Gentiles, to those who were pagan. He gave them hope. He gives us hope. And it was said by the prophets that this ministry would come to the Gentiles. Look now in your bulletin. There's a number of past uh, verses that are listed there that we're going to read in unison. So in Isaiah 49, 6, do you see that? It speaks of this Acts 10 passage coming to pass. Let's read this verse together. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation to reach to the ends of the earth. Make you a light for the Gentiles. Who's the you? The you are the Jewish people. The Jewish people who will witness and go to the Gentiles bearing the word of God, bearing the light of Christ. That's the beginning. That's in the Old Testament. And by the time we get to the end of the Bible, we see the big vision that will come to pass, that light and what it means. Revelation 22, 5. This is the picture of when all are gathered into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Let's read together. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. What is this a vision of? It's a vision of heaven, right? A vision of the kingdom that we won't even need. When we come in here and it's dark, we can't read without light. We can't see without light. We have artificial lights to help us see, lamps. We have the sun and the moon that have been set in place by God to see. Those won't even be anymore. What's going to be the light? But God himself the light of God when we get to heaven no more need for artificial or other lights God will be the light and in between the Old Testament and what will come to pass Jesus comes and he says from John 8 12 let's read this together when Jesus spoke again to the people he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. So if Jesus is the light and God is who gives light, Jesus is God. Jesus came as the light. He came as God. There's another scripture not listed here. 1 John chapter 1. We have 1 John chapter 4 noted in the back of our sanctuary. God is love. But even before that, in chapter 1, it says this. Three little words, easy to remember. God is light. God is light. But then he says that in Revelation 22, 5, they will reign forever. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. That's us. We have the light shining within us. So what does Jesus say in Matthew 5, verses 14 and 16? Let's read that together. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. And then he ends Matthew by saying, go and make disciples of all nations. We've been hearing that over and over again. So if you put those two together, 
look at the front cover of your bulletin today. This is the new vision and mission that has been discerned by the session of the church. The vision is the vision of heaven, the vision of God, to walk in the light of God. We don't want to keep the light to ourselves, though. We want others to walk in the light. And so then we have tasks to do. We have a charge. It's a blessing to walk in the light. But we have a charge. And the charge is the, the part at the bottom. Making Jesus known is first at first. We go. We make Jesus known. And our symbol and our emblem of this vision and of this mission is our steeple light. How did this vision and mission come to be known and come to pass? First of all, through all the scripture. We've been reading it. We've been hearing it. The first scriptures that I preached were from John, all from, about light. We've been repeating this and hearing it over and over and over again. It's been pulsating like a flickering candle among us for these years. We've been hearing it. It's been a beautiful thing. But even be before I came, there was so much that God had put in place for us to begin to discover where we're supposed to go with this. Let's go back to the beginning of our particular congregation. I'm going to do this real quick. By the way, if you want to hear a little bit more of the history on this, please come to Sunday school next week. Kathy's going to present to you the unfolding of the vision and mission even more in full. So 1837 in a barn, right, decided we're going to found a church. That was in July. November, the church was founded. The congregation was founded. A building was found. But the building began to cave in. It wasn't safe. There needed to be a move to a new building. The move happened in 1870, and a new building was built. You're sitting in it. You're sitting in the sanctuary of that new 1870 building. Every rendition of the church since it was built with that building has an important standing out structure, and that is the bell tower and the steeple. This church has had the bell tower and the steeple. It has been present all these years. I don't know if we have really paid much attention or thought about that being part of our vision or our mission, but it really was. God knew it. He's the one who provided it for us. We put a bell in it. We ring it before and after every church service. Thank you, bell ringers of the past and of the current. We also have the steeple there. Do you know what that steeple makes us in the city of Pataskala? It does, but it marks us as the highest reaching, tallest building on Main Street and downtown Pataskala. We have been that all of these years. When you're standing on the ground, you can hardly pay attention to it because you've got to put your head up and look. But every artist has captured the steeple. Now, other nations know how important this is. Churches throughout the world put steeples on their churches. Why? To point to heaven, to point to the vision, to point to the kingdom, to point to God. We've been pointing all of the time that this building has existed since 1870. You can't easily tell, but Leslie, you'll love this. There is a picture, an aerial shot from Street Fair of the other end of the street, the northern end of the street, and we've used it in advertisements. It's an aerial shot. When you look down the street, you see our church at the very end, but it stands out. Why does it stand out? What, does it go, what goes above everything else? The steeple. God has put this building here. He has put us here. He has put the steeple there. He has said to point to me and on our 150th anniversary, a cross. In case we want to get wrong what we're pointing at, uh-uh-uh, no, we're pointing to Jesus. A cross at the 150th anniversary was put on the steeple. 
Then, for years after that, there had been a prayer of a certain family, the Mauger family. Matt Mauger, his dad, who was an architect, Matt, who worked as an engineer, civil engineering, understood about construction and buildings too, and they had a vision. They had a dream for a light to be on the steeple. Because even though we can't pay much attention to it during the daytime, if a light were on the steeple in the middle of the night, it sure shows up, and it does now. Praise the Lord. Our neighbors have come out, and when they see us outside, they've come up to us. Some of you have may have been a part of this. Thank you for the steeple light. It is a, it's a steeple of peace and of hope and of promise. It's the night light of Pataskala. We are the night light of Pataskala. We are the light of the world, the light of Pataskala. Now, it's just an emblem. Please don't idolize the steeple light and the steeple. It's pointing to God. It's pointing to the kingdom. It's pointing to Christ. It's pointing to heaven. It's pointing how we should walk. Walking in the light. And what does that mean? Come listen to Kathy. She'll tell you more about it next week. Right? It's pointing. This is a marvelous thing. And since we put that steeple light on, there is a person here who's been coming since December of 2019. He heard the bells, and then he saw the light. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Daniel started coming to be with us every week. And others have come after him. Lucy. Lucy and Austin, Susie, and Jim, Grace, and Megan, and they're with us regularly. Why? Because we preach words of light and words of life. They've, the light in the bells, right? But don't idolize it. We need to look to God, right? The point is, this is our mission, and this is our vision. This is what everything should be wrapped around. Everything that we do, should be working toward the vision and toward the mission. More will unfold. This happened in the account today with Cornelius. Today, she was only here in May, and by June, she knew she was ready to join. By July, she came before a session. Susie's already a member of our church, and she will come up at the baptismal font, just like Cornelius did. You Gentile, you, coming forward to say for us to bear witness that she's a member of our church. Rejoice. Today is a day of much rejoicing. Do you see the light? Do you want to walk in the light? Do you want to be the light? I know I do. Let us rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, we are going to stand and praise God. For the power of his light, Jesus Christ, all hail the power of Jesus' name, hymn 20. Let us stand and sing.
You may be seated. into the life of Christ through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. The power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. I ask you in the congregation, therefore, once again to reject sin and profess your faith in Christ and to confess the faith of the church into which we were baptized. So I ask you all to please stand as we reaffirm our baptismal vows. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love Will you? I will. Let us stay standing to affirm our faith with the ancient Apostles' Creed, the Baptismal Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He discerned and Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our assistant clerk is with us today, and in red, she is going to um, have you understand who is being received as a new member. Would you read that? You can stay there if you'd like. Received as a new member on 7-14-2022 by the session of First Presbyterian Church through the reaffirmation of faith is... Jay, Susie, Paul. So Susie, if you'll come up and stand on. She has a long walk, but God is patient. God is kind. So she'll stand over here so you can face the congregation and me, kind of at an angle. We're going to hear Susie today make her new membership vow. All of you who are members have already made this vow. And um, your answer is an easy one, but the question is printed there for you. You have publicly professed your faith already elsewhere. So that has already been done. You were baptized. But the question is, will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share regularly in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Susie, will you? I will. Let us now pray for our new member. Can I lay hands on you? Yes. Holy God, we praise you for calling us to be a servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for choosing to add to our number, Susie, in faith. Together, may we live in your spirit and so love one another 
that we may have the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we give honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So, Susie, I know we made you come and stand in front of this whole congregation and make your promise. They're not off the hook. They're standing and facing you now, and they are now going to make a promise to you as your congregation. Together, answer this question. Do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ at First Presbyterian Church of Pataskala promise to guide and nurture Susie by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be faithful member of his church? Do you? We do. You. you can hold them to that. So Susie, we would like to welcome you to First Presbyterian Church, you're already a member, and I just remembered I have this certificate. So you can start making your way back and I'll meet you over there and give it to you, but can I give you a hug? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, beautiful. And you may put your hands together for welcome. Thank you. Stop there. You are official. This is your certificate of membership. If anyone doubts it, you can show it to me. God bless you, Susie. You may be seated. Let us pray. Continue in our prayers. Loving and gracious Lord, we just thank you for the joy of who you are, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are in sending you your Son. We thank you, Father and Son, sending the Spirit and Spirit who you are and continuing to give us guidance in your word and light and life. We are so grateful for all of this. We are grateful for the gifts that you have given us and continuing to speak to us that we might know that the vision that you have for this particular church, what you want us to be, but also who you want us, what you want us to do. We thank you for this. We thank you for those who are newcomers, who are with us now, those who have decided to join and have made this decision, and those who are still discerning. We ask, Lord, that you guide people to be in the right place at the right time, as you always are. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of healing that you give, and we pray forth words of healing for those who have need in this church. We know, Lord, that most important healing is spiritual healing. And we thank you that we have received that in that we have received you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the children who are growing up in this way and for all of us who are children of all ages who continue to grow. Help to show us how it is that you want us to live out the faith and to do it according to your word. Lord, we also pray besides for spiritual needs, we pray for us, we pray for the world. We pray for Patasco. We lift a special prayer for the Good News Club. We are right now waiting to hear whether we are invited to go into all three of the elementary schools for Southwest Licking and to send out notice in hard copy to everyone. Lord, there are children out in our communities who haven't heard of you, who haven't been brought into the church, who haven't ever opened a Bible. I've met some of them out on the streets. Some of us have met others. We ask, O oh Lord, that you minister to them and that you allow the good news not to die and that we can be a part of it in Pataskala. We also pray, Lord, for the up and coming Sunday school class that we are offering in the fall. We ask that you bless listening evangelism that we'll learn more how exactly can we take the steps that you ask us to take. We pray for the um, youth education programs that are going to be taking place in this fall. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to help our children to grow. We also ask prayers for those who are suffering in their minds, for those who suffer mental illness, who have conditions that need to be remedied. Just as Jesus, you had gone to the Jericho, Jerusalem on the other side of the Jordan River 
make sure, Jesus, that those who are not in their right minds, as the world would say, can be brought to their right minds through you. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might know the good and pleasing and perfect will of the Father. Minister to those who have cognitive issues and issues of the mind, anxiety, depression, Alzheimer's, dementia, and other conditions, Lord. Minister to those who have financial situations where they need you to touch them and provide for you because you tell us you are the great provider. Minister to those who are poor in spirit that feel as though that they have lost hope. We ask special prayers for those who are suffering grief, especially for the DeHart Mauger family and the loss of Bruce who has ended the battle with cancer, having passed on Saturday, August the 6th. We ask prayers for the family that they might find, find comfort in you. We ask prayers for those who are homebound, who cannot be with us. We thank you, Lord, that Joanne Mauger is back in her beloved city of Pataskala, now at the Oaks. We ask, Lord, that though she cannot be in her home, that she would find a home within this new home. We pray for all of the ministers of mercy within our church who visit those who need special care. We also pray for those who have conditions of their bodies. We pray for those with cancer. We pray for those whose bones and joints and tendons are affected. We pray for those who have conditions of the heart that affect the circulatory system. We pray for those who have conditions of the kidney, for conditions of their eyes, for hearing issues, O oh Lord. We pray for those who have conditions of the pancreas, for diabetes. We ask, O oh Lord, that you be with all of these and more people that we know of and minister to these. Minister to the world, O oh Lord. Bring forth leaders and authorities that you will set in place who will lead well, both in the world and the nations, in medical fields, in education and businesses, but especially in the church, we pray for our nominating committee, that we will hear your voice well and that we will go in the way that you would ask us to go. We pray for those who are receiving phone calls and asked to consider nominations, that at, if the time is right, that they will not hesitate in saying yes. We pray, Lord, because you have told us and you have taught us how to pray, and so we say together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Part of the way that we show ourselves faithful disciples is being faithful stewards. Now is the time to consider what it is that you have been providing in the way of tithes and offerings to the church today and from here on in. Hear the offertory and may it speak to your heart and guide you in this way.
Let us pray. Lord our God, today we heard of a Gentile believer who came to follow you. But even before he had that belief that he brought forth memorial offerings, we bring forth thanksgiving offerings, not in memory, because you, Jesus, are alive. You are our Lord and you're our Savior. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. We consecrate these gifts to you to bring you glory and in your name. We pray, amen. Let us um, have our closing hymn, Remembering Jesus is Lord of All, hymn number 67. For those who are in Sunday school class who said they like gospel, here's a William Gaither song for you. So at the end of each service, we shouldn't just tuck our vision and mission away. We need to live it out. So we need to remember it. So it is our blessing in charge responsively each week. The blessing is the walking in the light. The charge is making Jesus known. So responsively we say, to walk in the light of God, making Jesus known is first at first. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Enjoy this rest of the Lord's Day and time together. Please pray for your nominating committee. And by the way, I won't be here for a week. My mother has COVID. Please pray for her. 
and I'm going to help a friend in North Carolina whose father's died and has to move. So please pray for me. It's a vacation, but really not. So thank you very much. I'll see you in two weeks.